Hey friends, Daniel here with the Leap Ages Tech Team bringing you today's tech tip. The countdown widget creates a timer that counts down to a specified date and time, such as the date and time of a live webinar or event. During this tech tip, let's dive in to the countdown widget. Now, as you can see here, I do have a page pulled up already, and I do already have a countdown widget on it. But let's say the page that I'm working with did not include a countdown widget by default. I can find the countdown widget under the widgets menu here on the left-hand side of our screen down here at the bottom where we see countdown. Now, if your screen is showing like this, just make sure to do the show more options so that you can scroll down and find that countdown widget. That countdown widget can then be clicked and held and drug onto the page dropped where you'd like it to appear. Now I'm gonna continue forward with the countdown widget that I already have here. So I'm gonna close up the widgets menu. Let's go ahead and place our mouse over the countdown widget where we can either click on it or click on this pencil icon. And let's work through the menu items for setting up our countdown widget. Our first option here is the type of timer we'd like to have. So our first option here is a standard timer where we can set a specified time and date for the timer to hit zero by. Now, in this case, we can adjust the time by just clicking here into the time option, deleting what we don't want and inputting the correct information. We can also adjust from AM to PM by just clicking on it. And then I just wanted to make sure to note that it will configure based on your computer's time zone. So I'm in Central Standard Time, which is why I chose CST here. Now, my next option is to select the date and I can either manually input the date here. Um, just wanna make sure to mention as we talk about this though, that make sure that you choose the standard American format of month, date, and year if you do type that in, or you can select it from the calendar picker down here. Now in this case, I can go ahead and input it. So I'll just say 11-18-2019, but I could also select it right down here as well, just like that. Now that we've set the standard timer, which we're actually gonna ultimately end up using, let's just talk about the other options that we have available. We do have the option for a daily timer. And what this means is it resets every day at a specified time. Again, I can set that time by clicking and deleting what's there and entering in what I like, selecting AM or PM. And again, that's gonna be in my time zone configured by my computer. So with the daily timer, just one quick thing to mention here, if the person that is viewing the page is in a different time zone, the timer's expiration will not be adjusted. Our last option here is an evergreen timer. And what this is, is unique to every visitor. Once they land on the page, they will have X amount of days, hours, and minutes until that countdown timer hits zero for them. We can adjust each by putting our mouse into the box for the day, deleting out what's there, and inputting what we want. Same with hours and with minutes as well. Now, in this case, one quick tip I wanted to make sure to mention is an evergreen timer can pair well with a redirect, which is the setting we're gonna talk about next. So when the timer runs out, visitors will be redirected to a new page. I also wanted to mention that if we decide to change the duration of our evergreen timer, we can reset it, which will start the timer over for all visitors. And that's using this option here that says reset countdown for all visitors. Now I'm gonna click back to standard because this is ultimately what I want to use. I'm gonna go ahead and input that into 5 p.m. and make sure it says November 18th. Let's move to our next option in the menu here, which is what happens after that countdown widget hits zero. Our first option here is do nothing and it exactly does that. Does nothing, the countdown widget will just show all zeros here. The next option we have is redirect. And what this does is it will redirect people to what we select, either a page section, another landing page we've created in our lead pages account, or an external URL when that countdown widget hits zero. To select an option, so I'm gonna use link to a landing page for our example here. I'm going to click on it and select the page I want to direct people to. And I can always remove that option by selecting remove here and selecting something different. Now our last option is show and hide. And what this says is that I can show or hide different sections of my page when that countdown timer hits zero. In this case, maybe I don't want people to sign up for my webinar once that timer hits zero, and I do have a call to action right here in the hero section, so I want to hide that when the countdown timer hits zero. I'm gonna go ahead and do nothing for now, and let's move on to our next menu option. 
Our next option here is to select the color. We have the option for background, number, and label. For each of these, we can select from the brand colors in our branding section of our Lead Pages account, any recent colors that we've used, or we can add a color, selecting from the color picker and moving the opacity slider, or inputting the color code and the opacity we'd like to use. Now in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select the teal color here. I'm gonna do this for each of these so that we can see that they change. Now let's move on to our next option, which is the paintbrush icon here, which we can choose and designate the styling of our countdown timer. First is our unstyled, which we have selected here, so it appears like this. Our next option is block, and for block, we do have a few options. We have square, rounded, we can adjust the roundedness, and circular. We also have the option for boxed in, and we have, again, square, rounded, and can adjust the roundedness, or circular. Now, with my current setup right here, I do like this. I just want to make sure to change the color for the numbers to be white so that we can actually see them. Now that we've gone through all the menu options here, there are a few additional things that I did want to make sure to mention. To resize the countdown timer on our page, drag the dividers, so these are our dividers here, between the columns in the left or the right. The timer will adjust in size to fit the columns automatically. So for example, I'm moving and adjusting here. And I just want to show you the layout here I have quick. I'm going to go to layout and I'm in my hero section, my countdown row, and I have three columns here. So two on the outsides, which are just empty space, and the middle column, which has my countdown widget in it. So what I just wanted to mention is how to add a column so that I could add a column in my rows here and create the effect that I have. And that's just using this add, add a column option. And I can move the columns around using these little six directional arrows, just like this. Now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and close this out. And let's talk about how to change our countdown widget to appear vertically instead of horizontally like it shows now. In this case, I'm gonna use those divider options again here. I'm just gonna click and hold and I'm gonna give the countdown widget essentially no space to be in, which will force it into a vertical mode. And I'll show you this here in preview. Let's go ahead and take a look at the preview quick so that we can see that it forced it into a vertical. And there we go. It forced it into a vertical mode. So let's go ahead and exit out. And I'm gonna put that back here. Just go ahead and use the dividers again. I like it like this. So let me go ahead and just adjust a little bit more. Awesome. Now let's talk about the font of the countdown widget here. The font for the countdown widget is actually something that we set under the styles section here. So let's go ahead and click into the styles section. In the styles section, under font styles, let's click to expand that, we have the countdown font. Let's go ahead and select something different here from our available font options. And we'll see that it adjusts accordingly. And this is a global setting, so if you have additional countdown widgets on your page, this setting will affect them as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the page styles menu here. I wanna take a moment to thank you for hanging out with me for this tech tip. And don't forget, if you have any questions, our knowledge base and support team are just a click away under the question mark within your Lead Pages account.